at this time we are in the process of setting up postgres database and tables as part of postgres database server on our windows or mac already we have covered the details about setting up postgres database server on windows or mac the current situation is we have postgres database server locally running as part of our windows or mac at the time of setting up postgres database server even postgres database as well as user are created along with postgres database server even pg admin is installed using pg admin we are able to connect to the postgres database using postgres user by specifying the required password whatever password we have used while setting up postgres database server we have used the same password and we are able to connect using pg admin to this database now it is time for us to set up additional databases these additional databases are typically known as application databases whatever database that is out there is nothing but system database it will have all system tables in it the way we will be taking care of it is like this we will create a new database the name of the database will be itversity underscore retail underscore db it will be having the application related tables as part of this uh, whiteboarding i am just saying the database name as retail underscore db but the name i will be using is nothing but itversity underscore retail underscore db on top of retail underscore db database we will also create something called as retail underscore user we will be using the postgres user to create this database keep in mind postgres is a super user hence postgres user will have access to this database as well postgres user will have access to all the databases that are set up as part of our postgres database server which is nothing but multi tenant database server on top of application database we'll also have application user the name of the application user will be itversity underscore retail underscore user but as part of this whiteboarding i'll be just saying retail underscore user this retail underscore user will have all the permissions on the database retail underscore db database once we take care of setting up this database and this user we'll actually delete the server from pg admin which is configured using postgres super user it is a good practice to not have any connections or servers using the super users because it will not only lead into confusion sometimes you might end up making mistakes that is why after creating the application database and user and also validating whether it is working as expected or not we'll take care of deleting the server which is added in pg admin using credentials related to postgres user and postgres database now let's go into pg admin here here you should be able to say create a database and you can specify the database name however first you need to understand how to get to this query editor i have already covered as part of previous lecture i'll be covering it once again let me close this first now the query editor is gone to launch query editor you are supposed to expand the server after expanding the server you are supposed to expand the database also once database is expanded then you have to right click on one of the databases and click on query tool as of now we have only one database using that database itself we are able to launch the query editor you can see the details here in this case we have launched this query editor using postgres user and postgres database if you observe here it is the name of this file it says postgres slash postgres the first postgres is nothing but user i guess the second one is nothing but database at the rate the server name it can be other way around also we'll understand once we create another user along with the database and connect it to database using that user and launch the query editor for now just keep in mind that one of the postgres here is nothing but username the other one is nothing but database now to create a database you have to use this command create database let me see if i'll be able to zoom in after create database we should be able to specify the database name in this case it is nothing but itversity underscore retail underscore db you can also review the syntax with respect to create database command let me go to browser here let me say google.com now let me search for create database command postgres let me hit enter let me click on this let's scroll down to see examples you can find quite a lot of examples here 
you can actually create database with owner like this it will take care of even creating the user however the user might not have the password you have to configure the password first let's create the user then we'll try to create the database using this approach you can also create database first then create user then grant permissions on database to user but in this case i'll be creating user first then i'll actually take care of creating the database with this command as reference let me go here let me first create the user the username is nothing but itvst underscore retail underscore user there is a typo in the username let me fix it make sure you review these names and confirm that you are specifying right names then we can say with encrypted password for this i'll be providing the password as itvarsity now let me select this let me click on this to run only that command will run if you just click on this without selecting a particular line the entire file will run each and every command in the file will run it is a good practice to have semicolon at the end of each command so that you can run the file as a script where all the commands in the script will run if you do not have semicolon then it will start throwing errors it is a good practice to have semicolons after each and every command as part of these files or scripts. Now we should be able to say create database itvarsity underscore retail underscore db owner. Who is the owner? The owner is nothing but itvarsity underscore retail underscore user. Make sure you review your command against this and confirm it is as per the expectations. Let's also go here and see the command for the reference. The command is right. Hence, we should be able to select this. Then click on this. It will take care of running. You can see it is also run. Now, let's do one thing. Let's right click on this. Let's click on refresh. You see, we have two databases. As of now, we are connected to this uh, database server using Postgres as user. As Postgres is super user, Postgres have access to all the databases that are set up as part of the server. You should be able to click on this one to expand this database. You can see that the connection is established to this database. Even this connection with this database is active using Postgres as user. If you expand schemas within database, you can see there is something called as public. This public schema is different from the public schema what we have seen earlier as part of Postgres database. You can have schemas with the same names in multiple databases within the same Postgres database server. As we are ready with our application database and user, now it is time for us to remove this server completely. Let me right click. Now let me see. Yeah, there is option remove server. We should be able to click on this. Now it is removed. As of now, there are no servers. When it comes to our current status, we have Postgres database, retail underscore DB database, Postgres user, retail underscore user. Keep in mind, Postgres is a system database. Postgres is a super user. This super user have access to all the databases. Retail underscore DB is application database. We'll be having application tables in this database. Retail user is application user who have access to only this database. If you wanted to create other set of databases for same application, we can have multiple databases. The same user can have access to multiple databases or multiple users can have access to the same database. The relationship between databases and users is many to many. Now the connection or server in PG admin with these details is deleted. Let's try connecting using these details and then we'll attempt to create the table. In this case, we should be able to go to this one and close this. Click on don't save. Now the script or query editor is closed. We have to add new server. Let me say register server. In this case, I'll be naming it as local postgres 15 then itvarsity retail underscore db. We are attempting to connect to itvarsity retail db database. If you want, you can also specify both username as well as database name. But I'll be specifying only database name here. Or let me actually specify the username username might be better now let's go to the connection when it comes to hostname or address as pg admin as well as postgres database server are running on same windows or mac we should be specifying localhost the default port is 5432 our postgres database server is running using this port only hence we don't need to change the port when it comes to the database it is nothing but 
ITVersity underscore retail underscore DB. I hope you have used the same database name and username I have specified as part of create user and create database commands. When it comes to username, the username is nothing but ITVersity underscore retail underscore user. When it comes to password, it is nothing but ITVersity. Now you should be able to click on this to enable save password. You should be able to click on save to save. Now it is saved and also the connection is established to ITVersity Retail DB database using ITVersity Retail user. The connection is validated. You can see the database here. It is active. It is not active. If you attempt to access anything from this database, it will throw error. Actually, as it is a system database, there is access to that, but we will not be able to perform any write operations. We might be able to read things from this, but we will not be able to take care of any writes. If you attempt to create any table within Postgres database schema, it will not work. But if you attempt to create any table within ITVersity Retail DB schema, it will work. As of now, we have only one schema within this database. It is nothing but public. By default, if we do not specify the schema name, the tables will go to public schema. Let's scroll down and let's expand tables. As of now, there are no tables in this public schema within this database called as ITVersity Retail DB database. Now, we should be able to right click on this database, click on query tool to go to query editor. It will launch the query editor and it will take us to the query editor. The cursor is here now. Now we should be able to create the table depending upon our needs. I'll be creating a table by name sales depending upon our sales data. Our sales data have four fields. They are nothing but sale ID, sale rep ID, sale amount and commission percentage. I'll be creating the table for those four attributes. So in this case, we can say create table, then table name which is nothing but sales. Then in curly braces, you should be able to specify the columns along with the data types. The first column is nothing but sale ID. It is of type int. Then sale rep ID. It is also of type int. Then we have something called as sale underscore amount. Let's specify it as float. Let's see whether it works or not. If it doesn't work, we'll try to fix. Then commission percentage. Which is also of type int. Let's specify sale ID as primary key here, which means sale ID is supposed to be both unique as well as not null. Primary key means both unique as well as not null. I'm not going to cover all key concepts with respect to databases as part of these lectures. I will just touch point whatever are required. In this case, we are attempting to create table by name sales within database by name ITVersity underscore retail underscore db database using ITVersity underscore retail underscore user. You can see the details related to the connection associated with this query editor by reviewing here. The database name is nothing but ITVersity underscore retail underscore db. The user is nothing but ITVersity underscore retail underscore user. The server is based on whatever name we have given here. It is nothing but local Postgres 15 ITVersity retail user. Let's end this with a semicolon. Then Let's click on run after selecting this. You can see the table is created successfully. Now the table is created in public schema by default. Let's scroll down. As of now, there are no tables in this because we haven't refreshed after creating the table. Now let's right click. Let's click on refresh. Let's expand public. Let's expand tables. You can see the sales table here. If you go to the other one, which is nothing but Postgres, if you go to public schema within Postgres database, still you will not be seeing any tables because we haven't attempted to create any table in this. Even if you have write permissions to this database, you are not supposed to create any tables in this unless and until it is absolutely necessary. Now let's make sure we disconnect from this. Don't connect to this unless and until it is absolutely required. Now we are ready with application database by name ITVersity Retail DB. ITVersity Retail User is the owner for this database. As part of the database, we have even created a table by name sales. We'll actually go through the details about how to get data into the table as part of next lecture where we'll be talking about CRUD operations using SQL. That being said, I hope you have followed both the last lecture as well as this lecture. By the end of this lecture, you should have Postgres database server up and running as part of your Windows system. Also, you should have PG Admin. You should be creating database by name ITVersity Retail DB database 
with user it versus retail user as owner once the database and user for the application are ready make sure you disconnect the server and delete the server with postgres credentials then you are supposed to create a new server with it versus retail user credential and have only one server like this in this you should be able to see it versus retail db database and also you should be able to create the table by the end of this lecture you should not only be ready with application database and user you should also be ready with a table within application database by name sales i hope you have taken care of all the tasks if not follow the lectures once again and take care of all these things if you think something is not set up properly if you wanted to confirm whether everything is properly set up or not feel free to reach out to us we'll provide a required support we'll be there to serve you in case if there is any confusion make sure you have the setup exactly the same way i have set up unless and until you are really comfortable with these things so that you will not be getting into any unforeseen issues at a later point in time that being said now it is time for us to explore details with respect to crud operations using sql whatever we have seen as part of previous lecture and this lecture are considered as exercises there are no additional exercises for these topics you just have to have postgres database server set up on your machine along with database and user and also you should have the table set up the database user and table should be related to your application not system